Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm, I've just got a photo, honestly, that I was kind of like, I like the idea of the photo. I just didn't really like the, the, the look of the photo, for lack of a better word. In other words, the light was boring and I was kind of like, eh, it's not exactly an inspired photo. That's part of the fun for me of Luminar AI is you can get inspired uh, using some of these tools and filters and all that kind of stuff to just make something that you want to make. It's kind of what I'm doing here. It's basically an overhaul. Let me show you the photo. Here it is. This is a, a one of the churches in Copenhagen, an absolutely beautiful town uh, in Denmark. It started like that. I did some lens and geometry, some composition AI, just kind of got it going. And of course, the first thing I want to do here is replace a sky. So I'm going to click on sky AI, sky selection. I'm going to go plus. And my friend Matt Seuss has a freaking amazing, uh, this desert sunset pack. I'll put a link down below if you want to check out some of his skies. But I'm using this desert sunset 41. I'm going to go ahead and click open. Oh, I've already got it in there. Um, I'm going to skip. I don't need to replace it. It's already here because I've used it before. I had not noticed that in Luminar AI before. But anyway, it goes in. I mean, it just looks great. Honestly, I need to make some adjustments. So I'm going to start with horizon blending. I'm going to go pretty high here. Something like that, I think, brings it together. Next up is mask refinement. And I uh, landed on 100 here. And closed gaps have about a 40. And then fixed details was about a 10. And to be clear, I mean, you probably know this if you have Luminar AI, and that is every photo is different. So you have to move these sliders to, just to kind of figure out how it's going to work for you. Uh, in other words, season to taste. Uh, I am going to do relight saturation of about a 45, 46, something like that. And relight strength is actually zero. No humans here. Reflection amount is actually going to go up a bit to about high 70s, maybe 79. And then my sky adjustment. I am going to warm it up a little bit, just about a 15 or 16, and I am going to brighten it. I'm finding that most times I am brightening the skies a little bit, partly because the scene relight and the reflection amount seems to kind of darken the foreground a little bit. So that's my sky. Let me turn this off so you can kind of see the before. There it is before, and there it is after. It's gone in nicely behind the trees. The reflection was picked up here. I think that looks fine in this uh, pond or whatever it may be. One more time, there it is before, and there it is after. So now that I've got my sky in, which I recommend doing first, I mostly do that first. Sometimes I decide later, like in that video, I decide a little bit later that I am going to replace the sky. But uh, in this case, I knew I was going to do it because that was the main thing about the photo. I just didn't really like the boring kind of light that I had. So anyway, I've done that. I'm going to pop over here to Accent AI, give that about a 47, and the Sky Enhancer is going to get about a 40. So that's helping me kind of bring that scene to life because, as you could tell, it's fairly dark. Next up is light. And so I'm going to go a little warmer here, here. so like 7,300 and change. Tint is going to go to the right, about a positive 16 or 17. I like that kind of magenta cast on my sunsets, just a personal preference. But uh, next up is contrast. And again, just like everything in my videos, all of these are basically not just season to taste, but just experiment, move them around, kind of see what you figure out that works for you, uh, you know, and make adjustments accordingly. And here I'm lifting shadows to kind of bring that foreground uh, into a little bit better visibility. I think so far, honestly, we've got a much better looking photo. There it is before, and then there it is after. Now I'm going to go into Structure AI, and I just like to smooth out sky. So I'm going to take that into the negative 50s, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm in brush. So I'm going to come over here and just paint this into the sky in order to just soften it up, create a little bit more of kind of that long exposure look. Again, personal preference, just something I like to do. Okay, so if I show you the mask, you can see kind of what I've done here. Just painted all over the sky, and I also did a little bit of the reflection in the water. Go ahead and hide mask and close that. But I basically just soften up the sky. Again, personal preference as everything is. Next up is going to be saturation of vibrance. I'm going to raise the vibrance a little bit and I'm going to remove a color cast. I'm going to do about a 50 there because I felt like some of that um, magenta was just getting a little bit too strong. And so if I turn this off, there it is before and there it is after. I think that tamed that a little bit, which I think looks nice here. Okay, next up is mystical. It wouldn't be a photo without a little mystical. I just love that. So I'm going to do about a 25 or something like that. But I'm going to pull the shadows up a little bit. I don't want to get it too dark. 
that mystical does add a little bit of contrast overall. It kind of softens things up, but if you look at the before and the after, it's got a nice subtle impact on the photo. Not a huge difference, but one I like nonetheless. And last thing left is just super contrast. I, I love this tool. I, I use it in a lot of my videos. I just feel like it gives me such great control over my image. So I'm just kind of making some adjustments here. And this is what I've normally done is I'll come in and just make adjustments to the tools. And then I go back to the balance and kind of play around with them. And so what I landed on was like a negative 25 balance in highlights, a negative 20 here in the midtones and about a positive nine in shadows, 10, something like that. So again, not a massive dramatic difference in contrast, but there it is before and there it is after. I just think it looks nice. And really that's my full edit. I mean, I could sit here and keep doing things just to play around and have fun. But honestly, I just think it looks nice like that. So if I do the before and after, remember it's kind of a grayish, kind of blue. The verticals were off. It was just a little too much. And I've straightened that. I've removed a couple of spots. And I think it just had a huge impact on the photo. So there it is before and there it is after. I love how the reflection kind of picked up in the pond. I think that looks nice. The relighting and all those kind of things. Obviously the new sky, just the ability to put in a new sky so quickly allows you to kind of create a bit more of a dramatic photo and something that, you know, you could consider an art piece if you look at it that way. But balance of light basically just created a bit more colorful scene. The only other thing I haven't done, and you can do this easily with a local adjustment, is come in here and add some texture. Uh, well, I'm sorry, that's the wrong word. Add some structure into the building itself. If you wanted to create a little bit more crunch, you can see how that's kind of impacting the whole photo. Uh, but I want to just go ahead and place that into the church. I actually do think I want to do that. I want to create a little bit more crunch there in the church and maybe a little bit in that wall. And I think I'm going to get a little bit over here in these buildings as well. Let me get a little bit better job on that church. Something about like that just added a little bit of structure. And if you wanted to, you could even bring up the exposure a little bit if you wanted to create a little bit better visibility. I actually think I need to shrink my mouse and come over here and add that to the top of the church as well just to balance it all out. Okay, I've got my mask applied. I'm actually going to pull the structure down a little bit and actually pull the exposure up a little bit more. I'm always tweaking and fiddling with my photos, honestly. I write out all these notes about what I want to do in the video, and then I get in the video and <laughs> totally change it. That's the fun of digital photography, my friends. Customize, play around, experiment, see what you come up with. But this local adjustment or local mask, if I turn that off, you can see a little bit darker, not quite as crunchy. And there it is on. A little bit better visibility into the, uh, the church itself and a little bit of that street. I like that look. Again, I, I make it up on the fly sometimes. But overall, I mean, we took a photo that was, honestly, I never really liked the photo. Love the location. I like the idea of the photo, but I just was never getting there. I feel like I've gotten there now. So that's the fun and power of Luminar AI. So many cool things you can do. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope you're staying safe, taking care of yourselves out there, and all that kind of stuff. Have fun editing. I'll see you soon in the next video. And adios.